Imagine a leader facing opponents both internal and external, tasked with a mission that's practically impossible, rebuilding a temple in ruins. Sounds like a tale of lost faith, doesn't it? Far from it. Discover how divine intervention turned complete desolation into a promise of unimaginable glory. In this video, I'll reveal an ancient secret that defies logic. How can solid faith and a celestial choice bring swift and abundant rewards, even from the ashes? Stay with us and uncover the power of unwavering belief, capable of altering destinies. Are you prepared to witness how the controversial can become miraculous? Don't miss out on this journey of rediscovery and blessings that surpass the visible. Curiosity is already consuming you, so brace yourself to be impacted and dare not interrupt the viewing. In 538 BCE, before Common Era, Cyrus, a Persian monarch, conquered Babylon. He was a benevolent ruler and announced to the displaced populations that they could return to their homelands, provided they built a temple to worship their god in his name. Thus, only 50,000 Jews chose to return, most of whom were born in exile and established as traders in Babylon, opting to stay. Babylon, situated on a major trade route, allowed many Jews to prosper financially. On the other hand, Jerusalem did not offer the same opportunities and seemed like a bleak prospect. Two individuals led those who returned, a prince named Zerubbabel, whose name means born in Babylon, and Joshua, the high priest. Zerubbabel, born in exile and never having visited the promised land, was the grandson of the last legitimate king, making him the sole remaining member of David's royal lineage. Therefore, he needed to return so that the divine promises of there always being a descendant of David on the throne of Israel could be upheld. The primary motivation of those who returned was spiritual, aware that they would not become rich and would face a daunting challenge in a land that had not been cultivated for seventy years and in a city without walls. Upon arrival, Zerubbabel and Joshua prioritized the construction of an altar and then a temple, to reaffirm themselves as God's people. We cannot underestimate the great sacrifice they made, leaving behind friends, relatives, and stable homes, trading prosperity for poverty and lucrative trade for lands that had been dry for seventy years. This gesture of faith and perseverance highlights the importance of their spiritual values and hope for a promising future guided by higher principles. However, they nurtured the dream, inspired by the Book of Chronicles, of restoring a royal kingdom with their own king and being God's people in the promised land to their ancestors. The task of building the temple was daunting. It was a small group with limited resources, leading them to plan a much smaller temple than Solomon's. Yet, the task seemed insurmountable. Opposition from the Samaritans and the regime change, with Darius assuming the throne, worsened the situation as he cut the subsidy Cyrus had provided for temple restoration, diverting these resources to finance military campaigns. Thus, fantasy gave way to reality. The magnitude of the challenge discouraged the people, who felt disheartened after only two years of work. For fourteen years, no other block was added to the temple, leaving only foundations and low pillars in place of their ancestors' dreams. As the economy plunged into deep recession, food became scarce and expensive, inflation and food supply decreased due to droughts and diseases. All the gold they had saved in Babylon was consumed in food and clothing, leaving no savings. It was a great disappointment. They had set out to rebuild a nation but ended up finding it hard to survive. Inevitably, they began to question their choices, concluding that they had made the right decision to return but had chosen an inopportune moment to do so. They began to wonder if they should have stayed longer in Babylon, saved more resources, and waited until they were in a better position to return with greater power and prosperity. Although Abraham was content with a tent and an altar, they aspired to rebuild after eighteen years of absence and little or nothing to show for it. It was in this desolate context that the prophet Haggai spoke his words. His prophecy is recorded in prose, which is significant because in scripture, God's thoughts are more often communicated in prose than in poetry. Thus, there is little of God's feelings in the book of Haggai. Sometimes, even God's best servants need a special word from the Lord. So, God gave Haggai a series of messages aimed at challenging the people to continue their work. The purpose was to stir up the people, to encourage them to resume the construction of the temple that God had entrusted to them. In the first chapter of Haggai, verses 1-15 in the New International Version, the command to build the house of God is reiterated. In the second year of King Darius, on the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. To Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua son of Jehozadak, saying thus, Thus says the Lord of hosts, This people say that the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, It is time for you to live in your decorated houses while this temple remains in ruins. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. 
You have sown much, but harvested little, you eat, but do not have enough, you drink, but are not filled with drink, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm, and he who earns wages earns wages to put into a bag with holes. This call to action aimed to reignite the people's determination to fulfill their divine mission, encouraging them to reflect on their priorities and dedicate themselves to the reconstruction of the temple as a center of their community and faith. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways, go up to the mountain, bring wood and build the temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. Says the Lord, You looked for much, and behold, it came to little, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its produce, for I have called for a drought on the land and the hills, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, on what the ground brings forth, on man and beast, and on all their labors of your hands. Then Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel, and Joshua son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the rest of the people, obeyed the voice of their God, the Lord, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the presence of the Lord. Haggai, messenger of the Lord, spoke to the people the message of the Lord, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the rest of the people. They came and started working on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the twenty-fourth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius's reign. The first communication dealt with egotism. Despite being survivors and loving the Lord, their passion for completing the sanctuary had waned, and they had strayed. While delaying the building of the house of the Lord, they busied themselves with erecting their own residences. However, Haggai directed them to redefine their priorities, reflecting the teaching of Matthew 6 verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This advice not only sought to reignite their commitment to building the temple but also reminded them that by prioritizing divine purposes, they would encounter divine support and provision for their own needs. Following this instruction, the people rediscovered their purpose and reaffirmed their dedication to the mission entrusted by God, demonstrating the importance of placing divine will above individual desires. In the book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 12, in the New International Version, we witness a mix of emotions among those who observed the foundation of the new sanctuary. Many of the priests, Levites, and heads of families, the elders who had seen the original temple, wept aloud when they saw the foundation of the sanctuary laid before their eyes, while others shouted for joy. This moment highlights the complexity of human feelings in the face of change, mourning for the loss of the old and rejoicing in the anticipation of the new. Longing for past golden days can become a source of discouragement rather than encouragement if we're not careful. This can lead to uncertainty about God's current purpose and result in criticism of what lies before us. If we cling too much to the past, we may lose ourselves in the present. Through Haggai, God emphasized the importance of resilience, repeating three times the command, Be strong. We are encouraged to persevere in the work of the Lord, trusting in His presence, His faithfulness, and His ability. Hebrews 12 verse 26, in the New International Version, reiterates this message, emphasizing that God promised to shake not only the earth but also the heavens, symbolizing a complete transformation. God assures that focusing on the unchangeable things, His throne, His word, His promises, His children, and eternity, is crucial. He promises to shake all things with His power so that only the unshakable remain. This reveals that something even greater than Solomon's temple would occur in that structure years later. When Jesus entered the sanctuary, he brought a much greater glory than what they had witnessed before. Grandeur does not reside in a place but in the personal presence of Jesus Christ. The most sublime event that can occur in any congregation is the spreading of the rumor that Jesus is present. This teaching reminds us that while we honor and value our past and traditions, we must always look forward to God's ongoing work among us and recognize Jesus' transformative presence as the true source of greatness and hope. Additionally, the story of rebuilding the temple under challenging circumstances serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of perseverance, faith, and obedience in the face of adversity. Despite the seemingly insurmountable obstacles, the people chose to heed the words of the prophet Haggai and prioritize the rebuilding of the temple, recognizing it as a central aspect of their identity as God's chosen people. Their willingness to trust in God's promises and commit themselves to His work, even when faced with doubts and setbacks, ultimately led to divine intervention and blessings. By aligning their priorities with God's will and relying on His strength, they were able to overcome obstacles, unite as a community, and make significant progress in rebuilding the temple.
The story also highlights the importance of leaders like Zerubbabel and Joshua, who provided guidance, encouragement, and spiritual leadership to the people during difficult times. Through their example of faithfulness and dedication to God's mission, they inspired others to persevere and remain steadfast in their commitment to rebuilding the temple. Ultimately, the story of the rebuilding of the temple serves as a testament to the transformative power of faith, resilience, and obedience in the face of adversity. It reminds us that, no matter how daunting the challenges may seem, God is faithful to His promises and will provide strength and guidance to those who trust in Him. On the twenty-fourth of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius's reign, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, raising crucial questions about purity and holiness. Haggai inquired about the law, questioning whether consecrated flesh, when touching other foods like kneaded bread, wine, oil, or any meal while in the fold of someone's garment, would sanctify them. The priests denied it. Subsequently, Haggai asked whether someone unclean from touching a corpse, when touching any of these foods, would render them impure. The priests agreed that indeed, they would. These questions, posed approximately two months later, on December 24, serve to illustrate a fundamental principle, holiness is not transmitted in the same way as impurity. Haggai used these legal questions to emphasize that while holiness cannot be transferred through physical contact, impurity can. And this applies to all aspects of life. We cannot pass our health to others, but illnesses can be easily shared. Similarly, when mixing clean water with dirty, impurity is transferred, not purity. This principle also has spiritual application. We cannot become internally pure merely through external actions. A rebirth experience, an internal change, is necessary. Haggai is emphasizing that true holiness and purification come from within, highlighting the need for internal transformation to reflect holiness externally. Haggai 2 verse 19, in the New International Version, echoes this teaching, encouraging reflection on the importance of seeking purity not only in our visible actions but in the essence of our being, promoting a truly holy life both internally and externally. In responding, Haggai highlighted the spiritual condition of the people and the nation before the Lord, stating that everything they did and offered was impure before God. He provoked deep reflection on their actions and consequences since the beginning of the temple's reconstruction, illustrating how their harvests were meager and their efforts frustrated by plagues, mildew, and hail, due to their neglect in seeking God. Despite these setbacks, the people did not turn to the Lord. Haggai then invited them to consider the future, starting from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, marked by the beginning of the foundation of the Lord's temple, emphasizing an imminent change in their fortune. From that day on, God promised to bless them, anticipating a time of prosperity and abundance, where previously nothing had borne fruit. This call to repentance and renewal resonates in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, where Paul speaks of the transformation that occurs in someone who is in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. This passage emphasizes the idea of rebirth and spiritual renewal that Haggai encouraged among the people of Israel. On the same day, the word of the Lord came to Haggai with a message for Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, promising a shaking both in heaven and on earth, the overthrow of thrones, and the end of the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. God promised to make Zerubbabel like a signet ring, a symbol of authority and divine choice, emphasizing Zerubbabel's importance in fulfilling divine purposes. These messages delivered on the same day underscore the importance of obedience to God and the willingness for spiritual renewal, promising significant transformations both in the natural and spiritual order, and highlighting Zerubbabel's central role in the restoration and promising future that God had for his people. The message delivered directly to Zerubbabel, the governor and leader, addressed the resistance he faced, both externally and internally. God sent to Zerubbabel, through the prophet Haggai, a message of firmness and encouragement, emphasizing the need for his servants to be regularly encouraged and challenged to remain faithful. God instructed Zerubbabel to be faithful, reminding him, and us, that faithfulness is viable because God's work acts in our favor. We do not need to accomplish the task of the Lord with our own strength. Instead, we are called to serve the Lord in a grand and powerful way, claiming God's strength in our mission. At that time, the primary means of communication was through clay tablets. When a written document contained promises of the king, he used his signet ring to authenticate it, giving it legitimacy and authority. It is notable that Zerubbabel is mentioned in the genealogy of the Lord, according to Matthew 1 verse 12, highlighting his importance not only in Jewish history but also in the broader context of Christian salvation. The presence of Christ in our lives, marking us with His image, is an act of divine choice. 
Just as God said to Zerubbabel, I have chosen you, this leads us to reflect on the projects and commitments in our lives that need to be completed, whether in teaching, raising children, or serving God. To encourage each of us on our journey, three priorities are highlighted, claiming the promise of the Lord's presence with us, anticipating God's blessings, and acknowledging that we have been chosen by God. Each of us has the ability to accomplish something unique for the Lord, something that no one else can do. Therefore, God exhorts us to be faithful and to continue working for Him, reminding us that as we dedicate ourselves to this task, we are not alone. We have the presence, strength, and blessing of God with us, empowering us to fulfill the mission entrusted to us. We have just immersed ourselves in a story of unwavering faith and divine victories against all odds. If this has inspired you, there is much more awaiting you in a continuous journey of exciting discoveries. Leave your like, comment your ideas, and share this inspiration. Join our community to explore, engage, and expand your horizons. Your next favorite video is already set to surprise you. Continue this extraordinary journey with us. Your participation ignites the flame of discovery and transformation. Click, follow, like, and let's together illuminate unexplored paths. As we close another chapter together, I know that some questions may still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk alone. In the comments, you will find a powerful key to this door, the ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living an abundant life. This is not just a book. It is the fruit of years of research, experiences, and profound revelations that are now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that hinder your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity that were meant for you. This ebook is more than letters on a page. It is a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fullness and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It is a promise waiting to be fulfilled. And with this guide, you are one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.